Hey, what's wrong with you, man? You ain't subscribed yet? IEYC Atlanta Burning 2.0. What you waiting on? Get it done, do it now. Hey, get them clicks, get them likes, and subscribe. Do it now. Stop this from happening, would you? Rewrite history, would you? Yeah, I would. You would, right? Yeah. What about you? Because the Bible just said the reason why this happened is because we broke God's law. So Tanya, let me give you one law before you leave. Deuteronomy 22 verse five. Because this history could have been avoided. Read. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse five. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So when we got these laws, we had a dress code that God gave us. Right. He said the woman what? The woman shall not wear. Shall not wear. So Tanya, this is clothing. Read. That which pertaineth unto a man. A piece of clothing that belongs to a man. What is that, Tanya? I don't know, but I'm going to keep wearing What we all got, got on right now? There it is. So... Now, what did I just ask? I said, if you could stop this from happening, would you? Yeah. But we just gave away that you could by not, not wearing pants. Read the rest of it. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So would you put on a dress? No. Right? So what about the Sabbath day? Would you buy anything today if you knew that this was going to happen to your mother? No, I wouldn't. Would you buy anything today knowing this will happen to you? Because you live in the same uh, curses. My brothers and sisters, how y'all doing? Mario and Nisha. Mario and Nisha. Blessed and thankful. Blessed and thankful. Blessed and thankful. So we asking our people, the people on this sign right here, if they could prevent this from happening, would they? Absolutely. If you could go back in time and prevent this from happening, would you? Absolutely. Okay. So why did this happen? Because we know it did happen. But the question is, why did it happen? What about what you think, Mario? I think it was that dream. People, people saw opportunity and, and took advantage of somebody. Okay, okay. A whole culture. Now, a lot of people become atheists because the question they ask is, where was God when this was happening to us? Right now. Where was God at? If, if, he's, if he loved everybody, why he let this happen to us? You think? I feel like it's obvious that it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of white people get, got a lot of... Trust for us and mm. generational wealth. Mm. And, and, and hard to miss. And their life is a lot easier than mine. Now. I got locked up yesterday for nothing. Really? And, and, and I know it's a system. And the system always have been rigged. It's just be a little bit harder to get out from up under and keep you tied up in the system. Uh -huh. so you're never able to get out of it. Now, can I tell you, everything, that lifestyle that you just described, is the same lifestyle that they lived is all written in the Bible. Bring it out. I'm about to show you right now. Read verse 1. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. But you said you feel like you love God love white people more. Let's see if he do. Read. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. This was after the Israelites left out of Egypt. God just killed the Egyptians so he can't love everybody. Somebody died so his people could be free. So he just said, read it again. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So like if your parents say, you could go to the, your friend's house this week, this weekend, if you do everything I say to do this week, right? That makes sense. So that's what God is saying to his children, read. To observe and to do all his commandments. His what? His commandments. His laws. So just like you got laws in your house that your children can't break, you had laws growing up that you couldn't break. God said before you go into my house, the land of Israel, you can't break my laws. Bring it out. Read. But if you do keep my commandments, go ahead. Which I command thee this day. What happened? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. No, equal to. 
above all nations. Next two. Above all nations of the earth. Now, wait a minute. God said if we keep his laws, that he will put us above all nations on the earth. Well, who's, a, who's above all nations of the earth right now? No, 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 no. What race of people? Easy said, right? He didn't have to think about it. So what happened? Verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Here's the flip side. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't clean your room, if you don't do what I say, if you stay out the house late. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. What's going to happen? And his statutes, which I command thee this day. Come on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said, wherever you go cursed shall ye be now he's very descriptive the blessings was verses 1 through 14 the curses is verse 15 through 68 so it's way more punishments than there are blessings let's read one verse 16 verse 16 curse shall thou be in the city where the israelites gonna be cursed at curse shall thou be in the city now let's take the city of griffin who's at the top and who's at the bottom I feel like I was at the bottom yesterday. You feel like you was at the bottom yesterday. And a lot of other days before that. And a lot of other days before that. What about you, Nisha? Who are we at the top? Are we blessed in the city of Griffin? No. Think about nationwide. Anywhere where you think of hoods, who are the first people to come to your mind? My time. But so but what if there's a rich neighborhood? Who the first person you think of? Why is that? Because read it again. Curse shall thou be in the city. Because God said, wherever you go for breaking my laws, you're going to be cursed in whatever city you find yourself in. Read. And curse shall thou be in the field. If you didn't think that that was talking about black people, read that again. And curse shall thou be in the field. Were we not cursed in them fields? Was we not cursed in them fields? Bring it out. That's what God said was going to happen to us. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. What do we need to do to make the change that we can make. What can we do? Mario, I'm finna dap you up because that's the best question that you could possibly ask. Let me give me first king chapter eight. Because we need to know how do we get out of what's called captivity. It's a slavery where the chains have been released off of us. We we could get jobs. We could we could go to the club on the weekend. Some jobs. We could get some, some jobs, right? Because we are still cursed in the city. So you can get a nice car, but let the uh, the police car get behind you. You're going to get yanked about that car. I just saw a video. They sick the dogs on the black man. Yeah. It, they told The police told them, don't release the dogs. What did they do? They released the dogs. His hands is up. He's compliant. So why is he still cursed? First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Read. Yeah. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee. That's why, because we sinned against God. Nisha, you go to church, you've been to church. What did the pastor describe sin as? You don't know, do you? That's a real big church. Do you think anybody in there really knows what sin is? First John 4, 3, pay attention. Do you think anybody knows what sin is in that church? They version of the sin. They version, but what the Bible says sin is. Because that's where we should get our information from, right? Right. Okay, so let's see what sin is according to the Bible. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So whosoever commits sin breaks the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of God's laws. So when I ask you could, if you could have stopped this from happening, would you? And you say, yeah. If we don't commit sin or break the laws in this Bible, this would have never happened to us. Right. If we didn't commit sin and break God's laws, you would have never been in a cell yesterday. Right. That's what God said. But we did sin, didn't we? So go back to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Because did you know buying today is a sin? Oh, yeah. How so? How so? Hold that. Give me Exodus chapter 20. Because we read... In Deuteronomy 28, 15, if we don't keep God's commandments, we're going to be cursed in the city, in the field. And that was just that was just the first curse. We didn't get through all of them, but watch this. Read. 
The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Come on. Remember the Sabbath day. This must be a book of prophecy, because Mario, when is the Sabbath day? Today, right? What about you, Nisha? Did you know that? Okay. But do you know what to do on the Sabbath day? Right. That's why God said this. Read it again. Remember. Do what? Remember. Because when this happened, when he was introduced to us, we forgot the Sabbath day. Oh, this ain't Jesus Christ. Y'all know that. Y'all yeah, been do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. So six days, all these businesses got the time to make the money. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Read. In it thou shalt do not do any work. Now at Popeye's, are they at work right now? So we, so not supposed to be buying from them. They say that in Nehemiah 10, 31. Get that real quick. So have you ever worked on the Sabbath day? Saturday? Saturday? So sin, thus punishment. That's right. Sin, thus arrest. That's right. Sin, thus problems. That's right. Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. Yeah. And if the people of the land. If the people of the land of Griffin, read. Bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. Vittles is food. On the Sabbath day, Saturday, to sell, which they're not supposed to be doing, read. That we would not buy it of them. Why ain't we going to buy it of them, Mario? There we go. That's right. You just took a strike off your record. Thank you. I mean, I got a little bit. I know Dr. Umar looking down saying, you're looking out for one. Listen, one listen, on, listen, one listen, one listen. The black Messiah Jesus, the Christ is looking down saying, good job. That's right. Because he's the one that's judging us. He's the one that put us in these positions you, for breaking his commandments. Agree with Dr. Umar? I don't know in what capacity. Does he teach God's commandments? Did he just teach you what you must do in order to not get cursed no, in the no, city? I don't think he all right, then, so we got to stick with the Bible. Right. If he coming out the Bible, I agree with everything he's saying. Right. The moment we start to go into Pan-Africanism, we all won, we all need to, it's, uh, economics is what's going to build us up, then we falling off. Watch this. Go back to uh, 1 Kings chapter 8. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Y'all married? Okay. Hebrews chapter 13. Because remember, what caused this to happen? Sin. Yeah. What caused you to be in bookings? Processing sin. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get this. Let's get this real quick. Three. The book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen and verse four. Marriage is honorable in all. You love Nisha, don't you? Nisha, you love Mario. Read it again. Nisha like this. She say, yeah, yeah. Let me sip a drink. Okay. Let him read the Bible. Go ahead, read it again. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So we grown. So y'all probably share the bed. The bed is only undefiled when you're married. That's right. So if it is being defiled, curses, arrest, read. But whoremongers. Whoremongers, that's men that sleep with different women and cause them to become whores. Because Mario, you look strong. You wouldn't let nobody call her out her name, would you? But by laying with her, you're treating her like one without marrying her. You see what I'm saying? So in your eyes, you got your standards, but in God's eyes, you doing the same thing. That's right. You married? Yes, I am. Who are married out here? Don't play with her. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. Can't, can't play with her. Because guess what? Sin, not keeping that law, cause that. Right. Cause arrest. Right. Y'all wife agree with our missus. 100%. That's right. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Right. We have... There is no other way. How long y'all been doing this? Since 2003, but how long you been doing it? Eight years. Okay. Eight years, been learning. And, it, and guess what? It was a process. I didn't have it all figured out. I learned I do, as I, I want, went. I do want to be a part, but I got to get to work. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me read it, let me read it, hold on. And then, and then I'm going to get the way, because you asked the perfect question. How do we get them curses up off of us? Because as you go on the way to work, you on the way to them curses. So read that. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. Can two walk together except they be agreed? First Kings 8. So how can two walk together except they be agreed? Of course our wives follow our leadership. 
They follow our leadership. We run our households in the spirit of Christ. Watch this, read. Yes, sir. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them. God put the white man over us because he's angry with us. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. And you got delivered to the enemy. You got delivered to the jail because of sin. I see you, my brother. Listen up. Listen to how to get right with God. Come on, read. So that they carried them away captives. Carried them what? Away captives. We was carried away captives, was we not? The Bible say it happened because we buy on the Sabbath day. Because we don't marry the women that we sleep with. Because we smoke cigarettes. Sin. Very good. Read. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. How y'all doing? Come on over. We learned how to get right with God. Read. Far or near, yet if they shall bethink themselves. Here we go. Here go. Here go. The, here go the steps. First, you have to bethink yourself. That means remember who you are. All of us have forgotten who we are because if I ask all five of us, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? Israelite. What's your nationality? Oh, American. American, what's your nationality? I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Israelite, what's your nationality? Hebrew. He's said, oh, there. Right. That means some of us remember and some of us forgot. If we remember that we are the children of Israel, not African American, not Haitians, Puerto Ricans, but we're from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, right. so on and so forth. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves. In the land, whether they were carried captives. Where will we carry captives? Right here in Griffin, Georgia. Bring it out. Right? Come on. And repent. And do what? And repent. Repent means you learn. Y'all need to go to the courthouse and make that thing official. Right. You learn. You can't buy on the Sabbath day. It's the Lord's Sabbath. <laughs> you learn. Women, we're not supposed to wear pants. We're supposed to be in modest clothing. But we didn't know. That's why I said bethink yourselves. You got to be remember who you, you are. Saturday, you don't buy from anybody. No, sir. No, you don't. We prepare. Nah, I know that. Yes, ma'am. We prepared the night before. My wife, she packed me a nice little lunch. That's right. right. Little salad, trying to, trying to thin the fat. You know what I'm saying? It's a little juice. Right. We juicing now. Right? So we prepare in advance. Before, let me get this one thing. First Timothy 2 and 9, because it seems like y'all about to go. This also goes into sin and what we did breaking God's laws because you got to protect your peace right here. This is your possession once y'all get married. But sis, you got to protect him and how you dress. Watch this, read. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel means we ain't supposed to see none of that. That belongs to your, hu your husband. We're not supposed to see the shape of your... That belong to your husband. If you ain't got a husband, it belong to God. That's right. You understand? Read. <laughs> With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness because a certain attitude comes with the way... A, uh, you say you like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, we out here for the people. We out here for the people. I'm going to say amen. Yeah. So that means we got to go to the closet and be like, modest, nope. Modest, nope. Modest, nope. But you can't do that until you get married to that woman. But still... Because guess what? That that right there, sister, that's for you. You should be dressing like a princess at all times. Right. You should be dressing like a daughter of God at all times. Come on. With shame faceness. Because it comes a certain attitude with that. You start to you start to move prim and proper. You, you, you picking up stuff off the floor different. When you got on a nice little gown, you don't want to be out here running and thugging and whatnot. Right? Come on. And sobriety. And sobriety. If you look, if you think about Miami and the dress code of all them sisters out there getting twerking on the beach, mm -hmm. are they in modest gowns and dresses? No. Are they in, are they sober minded? No. Hell no. Bro. So what do it mean? A certain spirit comes with the way we dress. Bro. Right. That's why when men put on tight clothes and dress like women for skits, how do they how do they behave? Right. Feminine. Right. right. Yeah. So the Bible is giving us the insides on our mind and the spirit of our clothing. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.
in this unit. 